Welcome to Coaster Head Uncut. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Coaster Net Uncut. I am, of course, Danny Miller from Rochester, New York, alongside Andy Barczyk from Chicago, Illinois. Uh, how's it going, Andy? It seems like we're going to fight our way through the uh, through the technical difficulties tonight. We've had a lot of them before we've even gotten going here tonight. Oh, man, it's crazy. Crazy The crazy systems that we use here at CoasterNet, in the CoasterNet studios. Yeah, it's it's going pretty good tonight. Um you know, just hanging out a little bit. Uh, you know, got a cool T-shirt on tonight. I see you got a cool T-shirt yeah, on tonight. Yeah, I, I yeah. you know, that's weird. We're both w- wearing it? we're both wearing wood coaster T-shirts for some reason. That's unusual. We are, aren't we? Hmm. 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 <laughs> yours is a Guazi shirt, right? And and yours is a Gold Striker shirt, I believe. Yeah, obviously Gold Striker. Wow. What what do these Those two coasters both- have in common? Hmm. 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 They're both made of wood. They're both at chain parts. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um. Hmm. Hmm. They both Gee. have Millennium Flyers now. Gee, I don't know. Hmm. Gee, I don't see anything <laughs> that I might be able to come up with. Oh. Hey! Hey! I I figured it out. (laughs) So sorry, we're having a little bit of fun. We're a little punchy tonight because we had about five false starts before we actually got to the uh, to start the show properly. I mean, technically, it's not cut because we we never really started. We never we never really started. But I, right, so we've had like five false starts, and, you know, with the, with the whole football thing going on, right? I mean, even the deflated footballs wouldn't have helped us tonight. <laughs> so, but so, anyways, we're going with Great Coasters International as our topic for tonight. We have a lot of comments from uh, viewers from uh, CoasterNet, the Coaster Consortium, the Wood Coaster Connoisseurs. Uh, Facebook group as well. We got a lot of comments um, from people, so I think we're going to have a good show. We had a lot of people with their input about what their favorite and some people what their least favorite GCI coasters are. Um, so, so uh, just to, how about a, just a quick background of Great Coasters International? Um, it kind of formed in 1994 by uh, Claire Hayne and Mike Boodley were the two that really. Uh, I guess formed Great Coasters back in 1994. Mike Boodley was a uh, worked for Custom Coasters, which formed a few years earlier. And you could kind of see in some of Custom Coasters' early days uh, the the GCI influence that Boodley had. Um, the Outlaw from Adventureland out there in Iowa and the curving first drop. Uh, I think that was built in 1993. So you could kind of see his influence on that. And uh, GCI's first coaster came out in 1996. That was the Wildcat there at Hershey Park, uh, not too far away from where I'm originally from. And they built a, a few in the in the the next couple of years. They built rides like uh, Guazi and the Two Roar rides, and then they came up with the, those wonderful Millennium Flyer trains right around the turn of the tree and put those on some of their, uh, the West Coast version of Roar at Discovery Kingdom, uh, Lightning Racer, and I think in 2004 they built Thunderhead, and really they started what has become kind of a trademark for them is the station flyby or the station fly-through. Uh, Thunderhead, you got that in 2004. Uh, Apocalypse out there at Magic Mountain has one. Renegade at Valley Fair has one. Uh, Gold Striker, um, my personal favorite, which we'll talk about a lot tonight, um, has one out there, California's Great America. So the station fly-through has really become kind of a thing that they like to do. Um, that giant one called it, just called Wood Coaster over at Night Valley in China has, I think, three, two or three of them because they, it's really big. If you haven't seen a video on that one, that's one to check out that I think we'll have to mention at least tonight. Um, that's one that obviously neither of us have been on. But um, so – 
Andy, why don't you go down, do you have like the list of the ones that you've been on? We, we talked about this before we went on the air about which ones we've each been on. So maybe yeah. we'll start with that so we can kind of make sure that we're not excluding that we haven't been on just, you know, to be fair. Yeah, I, I've been on, I believe the count was eight, if I recall correctly. And um, starting with um, one of my favorite GCIs was Prowler out at Worlds of Fun. And and maybe, you know, the more I think about it, you know, a, a, as you're going to see, a lot of people have Prowler pretty highly ranked. So it's not it's not like a slouch of a coaster. A lot of people have it as one of the best GCIs. But Prowler was also my first GCI coaster as well. Um, that when I went out, so when I went out to Worlds of Fun, you know, it just blew my mind. And and really, to be completely honest with you, uh, Prowler was also one of my first non, you know, my one of my first non Cedar Fair or non Six Flags wooden coasters because Worlds of Fun was one of the first parks that I went to that wasn't Cedar Point. So Prowler was actually one of the, my first experiences not being a blue streak, not being a mean streak. That um, okay. So I think that heavily accounts for why that is too. But other yeah, ones I've been... Put that into context a little bit. Yeah, so, so like later on you'll hear me say, what's so great about Thunderhead? You know, and kind of writing Prowler first, it's kind of like, well, Prowler does all of that stuff, and I think does it a little bit better than Thunderhead too, to be frank. But, um, but yeah, so I think I think Prowler being my first GCI really sets it apart and really puts it into a different category of why I like it so much. Um, but I've, like I said, I've also been on American Thunder, I've been on Apocalypse out at Magic Mountain, I've been on Gwazi. Uh, both sides of Gwazi I've been on, uh, not just the one side. Um, Lightning Racer, both sides. Prowler, obviously, I said Roar at Six Flags America. Um, Thunderhead at Dollywood. And then White Lightning uh, at Fun Spot. And then routing out the group would be Wildcat at Hershey Park. So um, how about you? Which ones have you uh, been on here? So I've, I've been on, I think we said 11 in total, if you're counting the racers as one, uh, which is, I guess, uh, that's how which RCG you should. has it listed here. Actually, oh, sorry. actually, <laughs> here, here, here's the rub. Here's the rub. Um, the GCI racers, I actually count as two. <laughs> Right, because they're so different. <laughs> so, so go figure. So the only the only Wood Coast racers that I count as two are the GCIs. <laughs> oh boy. Oh, man. <laughs> go figure. Anyways, so here are the ones that I've done. I've been on. I'm going to go through the same RCBB list that you did. <laughs> so, um, I've been on American Thunder, Apocalypse, uh, Gold Striker. Uh, both sides of Gwazi, um, Prowler, uh, both versions of Roar, the East Coast and West Coast version. I've been on Thunderhead at Dollywood. I've been on White Lightning, and I've been on uh, the Hershey Park Wildcat. I, I said Lightning Racer, right? I've been on both sides of Lightning Racer as well. Mm -hmm. Maybe I skipped over that. But, um, yeah, so um, the two that are – really racers, uh, you know, lightning racer, and then uh, Gwazi, at least in the States, have been on both sides of those. Uh, the other racer here that I see listed that neither of us have been on, obviously, is uh, uh, Joris and the Drock, which is over there in uh, Denmark. And that, that, that one looks really cool, too. There, there's So the ones that neither of us have been on, let's run through that and kind of just say that um, between the two of us, we're not going to have a whole lot of insight on these. Um, El Toro in Germany, which is a small one, but looks pretty good. Um, a lot of people who've ridden that one say that that one's pretty good. Uh, Joris and the Drac I just mentioned, which uh, translation to English is George and the Dragon. Um, Kentucky Rumbler, that's one that neither of us have been on, that a lot of people, I, I think it was Ryan Trout got to that one this year, and it immediately jumped, I think it might be like his number one or two wooden coaster. Um, I, he put it pretty high. Um, that's one that I'd like to somehow get out to this year, maybe. I, I think I might be able to do that. 
Uh, Ozark Wildcat. That's one that's been standing but not operating for a few years there in Branson. And I'll tell you what, when we went to Silver Dollar City back in, uh, uh, you know, just a couple of years ago, was it 2013 is when Outlaw Rumpin, yeah? It was Outlaw Rumpin, yeah. So it was just two years ago when we went out there and, you know, right there at the end of the Branson Strip, Celebration City sitting right there. And the Ozark Wildcat looks, it looks beautiful. And it's so sad to see it just sitting there rotting away after it only ran for a couple of years. And most people said it was one of the better ones. Uh, a lot of our commenters that we'll get to have ridden it and say that it was one of their favorites. The Renegade at Valley Fair is another U.S. one that neither of us have been to, although it sounds like both of us may get a chance to go to that one. I think you and I have been talking behind the scenes of both doing separate trips that may get us both to that one. Mm -hmm. uh, that's one that kind of gets put in no man's land. I don't think anyone really says that's their favorite, but not a whole lot. Of, but I never hear anyone saying that's their least favorite either. So uh -huh. I think that's... I think that's I think that's one that kind of gets put in no man's land, kind of kind of like American Thunder in most cases, where it's not a lot of people's favorite of the bunch, but it's not really near their least favorite either. Um, now they have the Starliner at Miracle Strip listed here, but but that's an under construction one that I think is, is that that's the re relocation or the rebuild project. So um, maybe not a GCI in a traditional sense anyway. <clears throat> um, Thunderbird at Powerland, which is in Finland, and I believe that's the wooden coaster that's the farthest north in the world. I think it's almost in the Arctic Circle. I, I really? A fun fact about that one. I, I think so. Um, it's it's up there at Powerland, which is the northern part of Finland, I believe, which is almost at the Arctic Circle. And for those of you who don't know what this one is, it's essentially a clone of American Thunder. Um, Thunderbird was actually built first, I believe. So um, American Thunder is a clone of Thunderbird. I, I'm pretty sure. Let me let me look at the opening date. Here. I'm pretty sure 2004. Yeah. So Thunderbird opened or 2006. Sorry. So yeah, uh, it was built two years before American Thunder. So American Thunder is actually a clone of Thunderbird. So that's a good comparison. Uh, last couple year. Um, one of the new ones going in over at China, I think, at Wanda City is uh, the Viper, which that, that one looks kind of cool. Um, don't know a whole lot about that one, but uh, GCI finally going over there in, uh, into uh, Ch China a little bit more. Um, Troy at Toberland is uh, a big favorite of the Europeans. I actually have a uh, – over on my shelf there, I have a running board from the Zero Cars of Troy that I wanted an auction. So that's pretty cool. Um, the last two here that neither of us have been on, uh, Vodan Timber Coaster at Europa Park. We've discussed that one in the past. Mm -hmm. uh, our friend Brian Bass has been on that one, and I think that's his favorite wooden coaster. So um, that's, that's a good comparison. And then the last one, the one that I mentioned briefly, uh, the wood coaster at Night Valley in China. And most people who have been on this one say that either this one or Gold Striker are probably probably the two best. Um, some people will say Thunderhead. Most your the people who are most experienced typically point to one of those three. Um, if you haven't seen what this what this one is, it's also kind of it's kind of known as the Mountain Flyer by some, but that's not the official name. Um, go to RCDB, check out some pictures of this one. It's just called Wood Coaster. If you look at DCI's list, it's there at the very bottom. Um, and if if you don't have a problem with watching uh, theme park review videos, there they have a seven or eight minute video of this one that shows uh, POV, reverse POV, off ride, and this thing is just massive. And I, this is this is probably one of the rides that I want to ride most that no one's ever heard of. There's almost no one's ever heard of this coaster, but Enough people like it that it actually is on the Golden Ticket's top 50 wood coaster list, which for a coaster in China is really good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um, so, so that kind of rounds out GCI's uh, repertoire there. I th think we kind of what, 22 all together. A couple of them are being built this year, and then they got one that's standing but not operating. But as of recording today, there's 19 that are running. Yeah, so we we've been on about you and I have been on pretty much the same 
in the region, about half of them, which which is pretty good. So. Yeah, so at this point, you know, like we said, we have a ton of comments, so maybe we should just throw out, you know, what other people have said, uh, just to, like, compare and contrast what happened, you know, what, what they what they like, and, um, you know, I'll start with a little bit with uh, CoasterNet, and... Right. It, it seems that it seems that the most written GCIs happen to be if if you're an inexperienced writer, most of them that you've written is probably Lightning Racer at Hershey. A lot of people have experience yeah. with that one. Um, obviously, with Guazi being down in Florida, um, people have a lot of experience with Guazi too. I, and as as you know that uh, when this show releases. Um, Tomorrow, <laughs> February first, will be Guazi's Basically. will be Guazi's last day. So, um, if you haven't yeah. ridden Guazi, you might want to book your flight tonight, <laughs> and and make yeah. sure you get to Tampa tomorrow. So, <laughs> I mean, pretty much, I mean, you're pretty much out of time if you're watching this. Uh, yeah, on the day of the release, you're pretty much out of time to ride. Guazi, if you hadn't, and I, I, do, you, do you want to start with Guazi right away and just talk a little bit about it briefly? Yeah, I know that's one that you and I kind of have differing opinions on, and may, maybe it's right, maybe it's rightful that we talk about that one since it's closing pretty much tomorrow. Yeah, Guazi is one of those interesting concepts that I I had the um the displeasure, in my opinion, to ride Guazi back in October when I was at uh, Busch Gardens Tampa for Holoscream. And I rode it at night, and the train was pretty much full. And I, I, I've said it before, but I swear it was running with missing wheels. That's how bad it was. Like, I, you... It was it was ungodly bad. It was it was the worst jackhammering I've ever experienced on a wood coaster ever in my life. Um, and it was just it was just terrible. And I'm like and I said to I said to my brother and my dad walking off the ride, I said, they got to tear this one down <laughs> and and look at a few months later. <laughs> That they're not going to tear it down. Well, they're not tearing it down, though. <laughs> they're not tearing it down, but they're definitely not remain having it remain open. Um, I know you had a very different. Yeah, you you had a very different opinion when you wrote it. Um, even after well, I did, so I don't know what you were writing, but Guazi's well, Guazi's one of those funny ones because I were I first heard Guazi I think when I was ten or eleven, and it was I think really my first big roller coaster. And that was, oh man, I want to say maybe it was 2001, 2002. It was prior to Shikra opening. So mm -hmm. it was no later than 2000. And Shikra had not been announced yet. So I, I'd be willing to, I want to say it was like 2000 or 2001. I want to say it was right around then. So only we're only talking about a year or two when it was open. And that's back when it still had the PTC trains. This was before the Millennium Flyers were really a big thing. And it, I wrote it with my dad, and I remember it being rough, and I remember it gave my dad a headache. And we're talking about a ride that was maybe two years old at the time. And I remember it being rough, but again, 10 or 11 years old, it's, it, I, I would think maybe any wooden roller coaster I would think would be rough, considering I hadn't been on any real big ones at the time, like only 10 or 11. That's kind of the age where you start to get into that transition phase where you start to ride everything, I think. Um, that's about the age my sister was. I think she was like 12 or 13 when she started to ride. I was 11 or 12, and I really started to want to go ride roller coasters. Um, but then the next time I went down wasn't until, I want to say, like 2010 when we did um, – when we did our, it was our first trip. We've gone to Florida like the last four years now, and our my my, my first time back at Bush Gardens was in the first year of that run. So it probably was 2010 after mo the Millennium Flyers, but before they closed down the Tiger Track. So both tracks were running, and I remember it being painful. I remember it not being all that fun. I remember it not being a great ride. I remember it being one of my least favorite wooden coasters just because of the roughness. 
I think over the past four or five years, I've, I've said it before on the show, I've become a fan of the rough wooden coaster, and I like a wooden coaster that beats me up a little bit. I mean, I, I like the Voyage. I, I like Predator. Um, I didn't think Timberwolf was all that bad. <laughs> um, you know, to put it in perspective, um, the, 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 I think if I were to re-ride the villain and to re-ride Son of Beast – Right now, um, those were really, really rough rides. I think I would enjoy them more now than I did when I originally rode them six or seven years ago. Um, I, I really enjoyed The Boss. Um, I really enjoy Ghost Rider. Um, so those are rides that have a pretty rough reputation, or reputation as being rough, and I enjoyed them. This past trip down to Florida, I had never really enjoyed Guazi and always said, all right, I just want to ride it once because we're here. I rewrote Guazi back in November. I rode it twice in the front seat, and I really liked it both times. And I don't know why, but I really I, – I thought it was pretty good. I thought there was some good airtime. Um, not quite – not the abundance as some of the other GCI coasters, but um, I rewrote it, and I enjoyed it both times. <laughs> I know that's – I don't share that opinion with many people, but I think Ryan Trout said it best. Yeah, on right. On our forums, I think Guazi has an awesome layout. Maybe you can pick up – Yeah, that so yeah, so, so Ryan Trout says that um, he he's he's almost the exact opposite of you, that in, in its prime condition, um, he, he, he labels it as two rides, that it would be two of the top – five GCIs of all time that, that the tiger and lion side would be both in the top five. Um, that, that, that the problems that it experienced with the weather, poor maintenance, that he thinks that now it's to the point of unsalvageable. And, 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 you know, it's interesting that he says that because it's one, it's the exact opposite of what you just said, but I think we're establishing here that you're kind of weird. Um, <laughs> I mean, I, I think – I don't think – I don't – let me be clear. I don't think Quasi has gotten any better. I don't think it's gotten any better in the last five years. I think I've gotten so used – I think I've gotten used to the fact that it's a rough ride because I've ridden it every year for the last, like, four years. And I think I've grown to like wooden coasters that beat me up a little bit more. And I think it was to the point where I had expectations so low for Guazi. I was just like, all right, I'm going to go ride it once because I'm here. And we don't know how much longer it's going to be around. And I was like, all right, this is going to be really bad. And I found myself going down the first drop and then up the second hill where it kind of banks and you get a little pop of air, to- air time as you're turning. And I'm like, hey, this isn't as bad as I remember it. And I think that's kind of what it was. So, anyway, but Ryan makes a good point. I think a topper track redo would be, like, perfect for that because I don't – see, the Iron Horse, I I love the way the structure looks. If you look at any aerial picture of Gwazi, I think the structure is just beautiful, and you and I, think, both agree on that. And I don't think that you would really need to add all sorts of overbanks and little extra speed bumps like you would typically find in an – Iron Horse, I don't know that it's really big enough for that. It's only 95 feet or so, I think. So I think a topper track redo with the same layout, if you could pull it off. Now, I know that's going to be very expensive, and quite honestly, that's money that the Bush SeaWorld parks aren't looking to spend right now, which is partially why it's closing um, tomorrow, whenever it is. Um, So it's it's interesting because... it's gonna be, for me. It's sad. It's sad to see any coaster close like this and just kind of sit there. I, I wish they would do something with it, not just close it. But I understand why they're doing it. But I wish they would. And 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 I think you know when when we look at it, and there is this huge outcry, like when it was first announced that they're closing Guazi. They're like, because I think even us to some extent, we thought something would be done with it before it would just outright close that even on previous shows we had said topper track or iron horse. And I think a lot of people automatically jump to the iron horse now because that's like the savior of all these coasters. And I, I, you know, there's a huge debate raging on our forums as well about wicked cyclone. And if it was even deserving to get the iron horse, because a lot of people are like, well, cyclone was fine as is, 
You know, Guazi is definitely not that case. Guazi is a case where most normal people not named Danny Miller thought that it was terrible. <laughs> thought, <laughs> thought, thought that it was terrible and needed to close. So, and, and my first jump was to the iron horse, but then like we were talking about it and like you said, it doesn't make sense for the iron horse. It just doesn't that, like you said, with the overbanks and, and changing the layout where most people love that layout, it's just a matter of finding a way to get it so that the ride doesn't destroy itself. And maybe topper track is that answer. I don't know, because if you do topper track and you put um, RMC trains on that, you know, the RMC trains might be heavier. Uh, it might tear up the structure just as it is now. So even the topper track might I, not. Yeah, I, I think... The problem with the top track is the, the, the layout is awesome, but the problem is the execution of it isn't 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 good. And I think we see that with the early GCIs, where rides like Wildcat at Hershey that has Millennium Flyers now, but that's still one that's pretty rough. They've done retracking to it, and it's gotten better with the retracking, but it still beats you up pretty good. And you know, Roar down at Six Flags America is the only one without Millennium Flyer trains now. That still runs PTCs, and that one beats you up pretty good. So I, I think I think the ones that started off with PTC trains and kind of were retrofitted with the Millennium Flyers have had this issue of, is it just too much for the Millennium Flyers to fix? Whereas rides like Lightning Racer, right next to Wildcat at Hershey, started with Millennium Flyers, and that's a perennial favorite among Wooden Coaster fans and non-Wooden Coaster fans. That's one that it has been smooth for a decade and a half now, and people love and point at as one of their favorite, if not their very favorite, at that park. And, you know, that's Steel Rock. He's been on, he's on our forums. He commented here. And after Thunderhead, that's what he puts up at the top. He puts Lightning Racer yeah. as his number two GCI, and he's been on almost 400 roller coasters. Uh, you know, he's in that very experienced field like you and I where he's been on most of them, at least most of the ones in the States. So, I, I mean, maybe something like that makes a difference, and it's just a shame that, that, that the earlier ones that didn't start with the Millennium Flyers kind of have had that issue, and it seems like the only real solution would be almost a complete track rebuild. Yeah. Very expensive. Yeah. Um, how about some other people? Like, like I, we we've already mentioned Steel Rock. We said Thunderhead is is, is his favorite GCI, followed by Lightning Racer, mm -hmm. Prowler, Kentucky Rumbler, American Thunder, White Lightning, Wildcat. That those are Wildcat's not one that you really see in a lot of people's lists, but he he still enjoys it. Um, he puts that one in his group. He he has them split up into a couple of groups here. He has. He has those seven listed under as the best. And then he has his next group is good ones that weren't great, but he would ride again. And he's got Renegade, Apocalypse, the uh, Maryland Roar, and Guazi in there. And then he's got other ones that he still needs to ride, obviously. He lists the rest of them. But he's been on 11 as well. He hasn't been on Gold Striker, and he has been on Kentucky Rumbler. Other than that, me and him have been on – the same ones, uh, or he's been on Renegade too, and not the California Royal. Mm -hmm. How about on the? So, um, how about on Facebook? Uh, what, what kind of um, what kind of response do we get there from people on what they liked? Because I'm just interested to see because this is one of those groupings that <clears throat> you really see a lot of differing opinions, like. Like usually, when you when you look at other companies, you look at like Intamins and B and M's that you begin to see a lot of the same Everyone's top. Got their favorite. Yeah, and, and and a lot of them coincide. That you can usually find like a few that everyone says yeah 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 yeah. But like here, it just seems like there's like a wide range with like you like some people love a thing like Wildcat and some people just don't like it at all, and then. It seems to be a wide range of opinion. Like, people love Thunderhead, but I don't like it all that much, you know? Um, yeah. 
Yeah, you're right. I mean, you look at BNM and mostly people will tell you, oh, yeah, Leviathan or Diamondback or mm-hmm. Nitro or Goliath or Apollo's Chair. Most people point at a hypercoaster or maybe like a Banshee or a Montu. I mean, for the most part, people agree with that. Or Intamin, you're looking at Millennium Force, Intimidator 305. You have the love-hate people either love or hate Skyrush, and there's maybe a couple of others. Um, but for the most part, you have, like, the same group of five. Now, granted, those companies have done a lot more. Yeah. Um, GCI, we're talking about 20 or so. But um, we have about 25 different people who commented on the uh, Woodcoaster Connoisseurs group, which is great. So we're going to try and read through all these here. Um, we'll go with uh, we'll go with first names and last initials, just so we're not uh, wrongly uh, reviewing any uh, Clark Kent's or revealing any Clark Kent's in here. <laughs> uh, Kane, our buddy Kane, he's from CoasterNet. Um, he he's, uh, he says American Thunder and Apocalypse. Uh, those are his two favorites. Now, he's a Midwest guy uh, like yourself. He's from Indiana. He used to do the SHQ with us. So. Um, you know, American Thunder is one he's close to. I didn't know that he'd uh, been out there to Apocalypse, but um, he says that that's one of his favorite. Um, Paul D., he, he thinks Prowler is his favorite. Um, he says it's kind of the love child of Voyage and the Ozark Wildcat. So he's one of those who's been on the Ozark Wildcat. Um, he, he says Prowler has the biggest cojones of any uh, GCI design. So <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 that was a funny con, but he's a Prowler fan. Um, so, and... You know, I'm sure you're going to call me out on my ranking of Prowler because um, I don't have Prowler in my top three GCIs. I have it as number five um, out of the 11. But I'm, I'm going to say a but here. My number one is Gold Striker. A close second is Thunderhead. And then after that, I have American Thunder, White Lightning, and Prowler. And I have those all very close to each other. Maybe I didn't get Prowler on a good – Here's the thing with Prowler. I went to Worlds of Fun when it was very empty. So I don't think I got I – th- I rode Prowler the most out of any coaster there. I think I rode Patriot three or four times. I rode Prowler like 12 times. It was by far my favorite coaster at that park. And I think of all those rides, maybe only one was a full train. And they closed at 7, so I didn't get to ride it at night. It, that kind of ride I think you're supposed to ride in the dark because it was late August and they closed early. Mm -hmm. And I was really upset I didn't get to ride Prowler at dark. I rode Prowler nonstop for the last two hours of my day. I did nothing but sit on the train of Prowler. I don't know how many rides I took on it. Well, Um, it's funny. Maybe it's because I didn't have a full train. I didn't get it at full bore, I don't think. It's funny that that you say that because um, (laughs) I literally sat on the Prowler train for two hours straight because I did coasting for kids at Worlds of Fun a few years back with Paul Drayback. And um, we and I sat for two hours on Prowler and loved every second of it. So I rode with my eyes closed. I rode, you know, <laughs> any way that you could ride that ride, I pretty much rode it in a, in a safe way. Um, you know, but it I it just does stuff that I love. It, it I think it it's one of the few rides that really encapsulates the theme that that especially that return run when you're going back to the station and you're yeah, dipping and diving yeah. back and forth, it's almost as if you feel like you are like, um, you know, a Panther running through the forest or something like it really, it yeah. really matches that the only other ride that I kind of felt that way. And really it wasn't too much. It was like cheetah hunt. And I, I think cheetah hunt, wasn't as good as what Prowler did. Like I really thought Prowler was a great ride from top to bottom. And I, I still love it. It's Prowler is one of the few wood coasters that, that would make a, make it an overall list, like in your top, in my top 20, probably like not many. Now let let me ask you this seat of choice on Prowler front or back for you. Because um, I couldn't decide. I I wrote, I wrote oh, several times and I couldn't decide. I think I think I was partial to the back, if for nothing else, because of the first drop. Yeah, I I think I rode mostly in the back on Prowler. Um, I I rode a few times up towards the front. I don't. I think I got one or two rides in the very front. Um, but yeah, I I really like that ride in the back. Uh, I just think that with the whipping nature of it, especially. 
it, it's very agile. It's, yeah. it's very aggressive, and it, it's, and it moves very quickly, which is what I liked about it. Yeah, I, I really, I really like Prowler. So I, I'm really happy to see because, like, I know you talk to me all the time and you give me, like, weird eyes and then, you know, other people are like, well, Prowler, what? But it seems that a lot of people <laughs> who have written it like Prowler. Like, so it's not a crazy opinion yeah. to hold. <laughs> Well, it, well, and again, it's it's not that I didn't like Prowler. I really enjoyed Prowler. I think it's the lifeblood of that park, and it's by far the best coaster at that park. Um, it, it was tough too because we rode Outlaw Run the day before, so that, yeah. that was that was another that was another tough one. Um, but again, Prowler, I had ridden like Thunderhead and Lightning Racer and American Thunder Apocalypse. I had ridden all of those before yeah. I rode Prowler. So so and maybe it was you talking up Prowler so much. Maybe I was like, okay, it kind of met expectations instead of exceeding them. And I was like, yeah, it's about what I thought it would be. And I I thought it would be one of the better GCIs I've ridden, and it was. Now it, it oh. was number four at the time, and I think I put White Lightning. Maybe I put White Lightning. Just to, it, it actually the return run on Prowler reminds me a lot of the return run on White Lightning because it's very mm. small hills, very aggressive, yeah. very agile, and very quick to kind of just change direction a little bit. Um, Prowler's the, I think, the longer ride, and I think if I would have ridden Prowler at night on a full train at full bore, I think I would have been higher. Um, to put it in perspective, I've been on 89 wooden coasters, and Prowler only being number five on my GCI list is still number 18 on my overall list. <laughs> So it's still in my top 20 overall, which is really good. Um, and you, you know what? And I, I should say, like, my, my one of the things I don't like about GCI is that I think a lot of their rides, when I start to look at things like Thunderhead and Apocalypse and um, American Thunder, like, things begin to, like, kind of blend together for me that – I, I don't like Prowler has that unique flavor of that. I think it really stands out that you're not going to get Prowler confused with American Thunder. Um, but yet, if you put American Thunder, if you could if you could put the two rides next to each other and put American Thunder and Apocalypse next to each other and say, OK, ride this one and that one and tell me which is which. I think there'd be a lot of people that might have some trouble being able to do that. And I think that's a problem with GCI is that they fall into, and it's, you could, you could say it's a problem with every coaster company at some point that they fall into, you know, routines of what to do where and how to do this element and then how to follow it up with the next element. Um, but Prowler is really, really stands out. Like once you hit that back end of the track, you'll know it's Prowler. And, that's what I really yeah. like about it. And that's what I kind of like about, you know, when we talked about the Intamin rides too, that I can tell you Maverick, I, I will not get Maverick confused with anything else. You put me on Diamondback and Intimidator and I might get a little confused at some point. <laughs> on what ride I'm yeah, on. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you're right. Um, you're right. No, you're, you're definitely, you're, you're definitely, you're definitely right there. Um, Prowler definitely is the most outside of the box, I think, that you could say from there, at least in the States. Um, I'm going to bring up the Wood Coaster at Night Valley again. Imagine Prowler. Imagine Prowler built on Boulder Dash's mountain, and imagine like a 200-foot height differential between the highest point and the lowest point. That's what this wood coaster over at Night Valley is. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's main, I don't think it gets more than like 40 or 50 feet off the ground at any point, but the height differential, I think, is something like 190 feet or something, and it's over 5,000 feet long, I think. I don't even, I don't even know what the stats are. I'm going to look up the stats real quick just because I'm really interested now. Um, wood coaster, Night Valley, luckily I still, have, okay, 4,817 feet high, or like, long, sorry. Not high. <laughs> Long. 4,817 feet is the length, so almost 5,000 feet. The first drop is 131 feet, but the first drop is also like a triple down, swooping, triple turn drop. Um, the height itself, though, is 147 feet. And um, I don't know, what's, what denomination, like what dollar is RMB? I don't, know. Mm, I don't even know. 
Okay, hold on. RMB to U.S. dollars. I'm going to figure out how much U.S. dollars. Is. Okay, that's the Chinese yuan. So it cost it cost 90 million RMB. So 90 million Chinese yuan would be 14 and a half million dollars U.S. dollars for a wood coaster. Yeah. So I mean that's 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 some serious change there. Um, and, you know, like I said, look at some pictures of that one. It opened in 2011. Look at some pictures. Look at some video of that one because that thing definitely has some major cojones. Poetry, <laughs> like <laughs> um, so. So sh- should we uh, should we continue with the comments here? We got still got a lot of them here. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Mark Mark D here said he he thinks they're all they're all really good uh, nonstop action uh, smooth and really exciting. Um, he's got smiley faces by Thunderhead, Gold Striker, Lightning Racer, Prowler, American Thunder, Apocalypse, and then he's got a sad face by Guazi. I, mm. I think he's kind of one of those people that it's like he it's like you know you know Guazi could be every bit as good as the others and it's it just beats you up. It's it's really a shame. Uh, Rendell uh, said that uh, Thunderhead is the highest ranked GCI on his list, and then after that he has Gold Striker. And see, Gold Striker is one of those interesting ones that I don't think a lot of people have ridden yet because it's it's only two years old, and it's kind of at an out of the way park. Yeah, it's at a Cedar Fair park, but California's Great America is one of those that people just don't they don't think to go to right away because it's not. You have Discovery Kingdom there. You have the Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk and Gilroy Gardens. You can make a good three- or four-day, like, long weekend trip out of that. But when you talk about California, people think of Disney, Knott's. They think of Magic Mountain. They might even think of SeaWorld in San Diego before they think of the Northern California part. So I think Gold Striker is definitely one that I think reinvigorated California's Great America because they need a really good roller coaster in the worst way, and they got it with Gold Striker because Gold Striker is, I would say it's it's the intensity for the Thunderhead fans out there. It's the intensity of Thunderhead kicked up a notch on a longer, taller, faster coaster, and that's that's what that's what I said. I sat on Gold Striker. I don't know how long, and and wrote it over and over and over again to the point where my my thighs were starting to hurt from all, all the time. I wrote it that long, <laughs> um, <laughs> and not in a bad way. Not not like Sky Rush where you write it once or twice and you start to feel it in your thighs. Like I wrote it that many times is how I thought about when I thought about Sky Rush. Um, Jake H here, he, he, we talk to him a lot. Uh, Thunderhead, uh, he thinks he says Thunderhead just goes so fast and has so much airtime, Thunderhead's his favorite. And um, I, I think in general, if there's one GCI that most people, that's it's kind of like the go-to for most people say, I think Thunderhead might be the yeah. one that most people point as if their favorite. Um, I think in get years and give people time to go out and ride Gold Striker, I think maybe Gold Striker becomes the one people, a lot of people um, who went to CoasterCon last year, uh, said that um, they were calling Gold Striker Thunderhead West. And I made the argument that I think Thunderhead is Gold Striker East because I think Gold Striker is a little bit better than Thunderhead. <laughs> Not by much, but, I mean, when I first got off it, I was like, Thunderhead West, my ass, this thing's a, a whole new app. <laughs> but, um, it, no, great, two, two great coasters, hey. <laughs> um, <laughs> Mark R. Now, I believe he does writing for the Ace Magazine, and he says nothing beats Gold Striker and White Lightning of the ones he's written. He's written most of them, and he says they're two most recent installations in the U.S. Uh, Gold Striker and White Lightning are his two favorite. And White Lightning, I think, was – I think you were when you wrote it. White Lightning was the intensity of, like, a Prowler or a Thunderhead mm-hmm. or a Gold Striker, the good GCI intensity – put in just a smaller package and put yeah. a smaller space. And I think that's exactly what Fun Spot was going for. And that was my 400th coaster back in November. It's just a fantastic ride. I sat on it. Got a lot of solo rides on it, too, and really, really enjoyed that coaster. Um, 
we'll continue on here. We still got people here. Um, let's see. Uh, Rob A. He says White Lightning um, as well. Uh, he says the Hershey Wildcat used to be his favorite until he, they ruined it with the trains. And he said the same thing with Quasi. So he actually liked the original uh, trains, the PTC trains. So that, that's interesting. That's an interesting uh, thought there. That's that's not something you usually hear from people. No. people uh, they get better with the uh, Millennium Flyers. Uh, he hasn't been to Dollywood World's Affair, or Words of, Worlds of Fun, or Great America, um, but he feels co- confident that uh, he would still like White Lightning the best. So, uh, cool, good for him. Um, let's see here. The next person here, uh, Mark D. also said that he forgot to mention, uh, he, he talked about Gold Striker and White Lightning. He says, and oh my friggin' lord, how could I forget Kentucky Rumbler? <laughs> he says it's a marvelous coaster. And Kentucky Rumbler is one of those that neither of us have been on. It was it. I think it was Ryan we talked about earlier that had been on it, and it was number one or two on his wood coaster list. Uh, Kentucky Rumbler is one of those out of the way. I think kind of like Gold Striker mm. doesn't get maybe the attention it should because it's kind of out of the way. Um, so, but Kentucky Rumbler, I think more people are starting to get to that with. Holiday World exploding in the last five years and, you know, five to ten years and Kentucky Kingdom reopening. I think more people are going to get to Kentucky Rumbler uh, now that those parks are more go-to parks. Um, Bill G here, he said he's not a big fan of the GCI rides. Um, He likes Kentucky Rumbler and Thunderhead and uh, Renegade. Um, Now, he went a different direction with his least favorite here. He actually said he doesn't like the work that they've done on the Coney Island Cyclone. Um, GCI did a lot of work to the Coney Island Cyclone a few years back to retrack it, reprofile it, and some people haven't liked the changes. They say that they've kind of uh, taken some of the intensity away, some of the raw feeling of the original Cyclone away, and he's one of those people who – isn't a fan of the work that they've done. Now, some people on the other side of that coin have said they've made it a lot smoother and the intensity is still there and they really enjoy the work they've done. He's one of those people who says uh, not so much. He, he likes the old, rougher Coney Island Cyclone, so that's interesting. Uh, Pete T, he says uh, Ozark Wildcat was his favorite until he rode Prowler. Uh, he hasn't been on White Lightning, but he's he thinks that White Lightning would be his favorite. So uh, he's one of those that have been on the old Ozark Wildcat. And uh, I know, he didn't uh, write in here, but uh, Adam from uh, Ohio out there in Cincinnati near Kings Island, no, he's been on Ozark Wildcat, and he said it's about a half step below Thunderhead. Um, and, and Thunderhead, I think, is his favorite. So uh, so, so that's interesting. I, I, well, it was really sad going to Silver Dollar City and driving right past yeah. those Ark Wildcat and just looking at it. And it looks like an awesome little coaster. I mean, it looks like everything you would want in a GCI. Small, compact, airtime. And and, and, and am, I, am I correct in thinking that Silver Dollar City still owns that? Like, they still own. I, I think they own. I think they do. So, and, and I know there's always discussion of that ride. Like, I, I don't think it's ever going to reopen in its current location. That that area is just not big enough to support another park. And, and I, I know the theory that Silver Dollar City was the day park and Celebration City would be the nighttime park that people would go to after they go to that one. And it, it was an interesting concept that just prove not to be able to be sustained in that area because, um, you know, that, that area is not like as much as, as much as we love silver dollar city, that area is not known for silver dollar city, you know, silver no, dollar city not, you know, for Branson and the strip and the shows. And exactly. The it's, it's like, it's like pigeon forge race world used to be open at Pigeon Forge, and they tried to build uh, the wooden coaster Thunder Eagle. Um, And that only ran for like half a year because with Dollywood and all the other tourist attractions there, I don't think Pigeon Forge was big enough to really support a second park. Orlando's a different story. That's why places like the Fun Spot work, because you have locals that will go to the Fun Spot because the locals aren't going to go to Disney every single day because sometimes they're crowded. 
And you might have maybe your lower income families that can't afford to be Universal and Disney and SeaWorld. So they might do a day or two at Disney and then they might look for some cheaper fun, ride some go karts, a couple of coasters, and you get that at the fun spot for like twenty bucks. And and I think and that's why I, it works. I think there's there might still be hope because now that I think about it, Silver Dollar City just moved their S and S tower uh, from Celebration City um, to the, it's gonna be part of their new Fireman's Landing over there at Silver Dollar City. Right. So maybe there are plans to move um, Ozark Wildcat somewhere. I I don't think Silver Dollar City is the place because the topography is just too much. It's it it would be no, it'd be uh, too tough to do it. You'd have to find somewhere fairly flat to put it. But, you know, maybe another park, like maybe a wild adventure down in uh, Georgia um, might be able to get another <laughs> another wood coaster. I, I don't I know. I want Dorney to buy it. I've been <laughs> wanting Dorney to get it. Dor- Dorney, Dorney and this is, this, is, this is the Homer in me coming out. This is my Homer pick here because for a while everyone said, oh, Dorney needs a new wooden coaster. They got rid of Hercules. Thunderhawk's the only one. They need an updated – Wooden coaster. Dorney's steel coaster collection is great. They need another steel coaster. They they need another wood coaster first. And I was really upset when we got dinosaurs instead of a GCI Woody back there in the woods. I think there's all kinds of talk about Dorney expanding out into the parking lot and moving the parking lot across the street. Boy, Ozark Wildcat would look really good there at Dorney, I think. I, mm-hmm. There's enough land that I think they could do it. It wouldn't require a whole lot of alterations to the land, I think. Boy, I would love to see a GCI at night. I mean, I, yeah, I have Hershey Park, and Lightning Racer is good. Wildcat is so-so. But, boy, I'd really love to have a GCI coaster 10 minutes away from me. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and, and it would just – you hate to see a coaster just sit there and rot away that and especially one that was so new yeah and in like 2003 and, 2004 it ran for four or five years that's it like you wonder how bad of shape it, it would be in um you know if it would just be more economical to just build a new ride outright or to go save that one um so, you know, and, and that's why maybe a corporate park outside of the, the Hershen chain doesn't make sense. But but then you, you also have the possibility of maybe a little park somewhere. You know, you, you know, Texas is known for for saving rides all the time. You know, m- maybe in, in, in a move down to Texas wouldn't be that extreme because, like you know, Frontier Missouri City in Oklahoma, maybe. Yeah. Well, Frontier City is kind of small. Um, they. They they could use a ride like that. They they would actually really benefit from that. It Ozark Wildcat being as small as it is might even be too big for Frontier City. Um, it's it's a small park. It's a real small park. Well, I mean, how about I can't think down in Branson. I mean, Silver Dollar City is open for a Christmas event. They're all open almost year round. I can't imagine the winters aren't too bad down there. They're far enough south. I would think Ozark Wildcat might be in reasonable shape. You'd probably, have, I can't imagine it would be any worse than like a Thunder Run at Kentucky Kingdom. They that one was yeah. closed for quite well, a few years, and they true. were able to get that one back up running. And this one's farther south. Probably doesn't have to deal with as much snow and ice. I I think it could be saved. Um, yeah. You'd have to find a plot of land, like you said, but. I think it's feasible that that one could go somewhere. Um, I hope it does because that's one that I really like to ride. You, you know, I'm a big GI fan. So yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, we got more comments here. Um, almost done through the wood coaster concert, and this is great. And this is the kind of response we want from our weekly questions, and we're we're gonna keep doing these. Um, Andy and I, we've had some discussions about our next couple shows, and I think uh, I think. We're we're gonna have, I think we're going to have a lot of people liking our, uh, <laughs> our shows. Uh, Jan- Janice here on uh, the Wood Coaster Connoisseur, she says she absolutely adores White Lightning, but she's never ridden a GCI that she didn't love, although Gwazi has gotten pretty unrideable in the backseat due to the neglect. And, and that's another good point. I mean, I think every GCI, when it first opens, 
has been a great coaster, no pun intended. I think it's really been a really, really good coaster. I think depending on how the park takes care of it, or takes care of it, kind of determines what it becomes down the road. When I rode Roar at Discovery Kingdom in 2012, I really enjoyed it. When I rode it this past year, I thought it was I thought it was getting a lot a lot rougher. Um, I didn't enjoy it as much as I did my first time, um, and I think that's just because Six Flags hadn't been taking care of it. They're starting to reprofile it in portions, so that's good. The first drop and the first turn were much better, but after that, where you got to the old sections, it, it jackhammered pretty good. Um, so it comes down to how well it's taken care of, and I think Hershey knows that about the Wildcat, and they've been trying to keep the Wildcat going because – you know, the PTC trains did that one, did a pretty good number on that ride in its early years until they put the Millennium Flyers on it in 2008, I believe. So that's mm-hmm. been 12 years with PTC trains beating it up. So, uh, you know, that, that has a, that one has a lot of work to be done to it to get back to what it could be. Yeah. Uh, Wildcat is another one with a great la- layout that could really be a spectacular coaster, but it's just not quite there yet. Uh, Shannon S. says, so many choices, but she likes Prowler and uh, El Toro over there in Germany. She likes that one. Now, I'm not quite sure how to pronounce the name of this park. I believe it's it, it, Freizet Park Plan. That's me. Yeah, okay. <laughs> that's, that's what I'm going to go with. But, uh, that, that's, that's one that a lot of the European people point to. They say... Kind of like a white lightning, they say it's a really good, intense, fast coaster in a small package, which kind of sounds. I think it's even smaller than white lightning. I'm, you know, just just for just for shiggles here. That's a word that I made up. Um, I'm gonna okay. Height eighty and a half feet. Drop seventy point seven feet. Top speed only forty five point six miles per hour, and uh, two thousand three hundred seventy nine feet long. So a couple tunnels. On the two tunnels go under a log flume, uh, just one train. So, I mean, you're not talking about anything big here. But uh, GCI is known for putting great rides in a very small package, you know, 80, 90, 100 feet or so. Um, they're, they're not the kind of company that's going to come out and build a 160, 170-foot coaster. They just don't yeah. do it, and they never have. And that for, I mean, that wood coaster over at Night Valley is really the biggest one that they've done, and that's only 100 and 40 some feet or so. <clears throat> so right there, you're, that's the biggest you're really getting with them. So um, let's see, two more here. Uh, Robert says that his two favorite GCIs are Prowler and Gold Striker. So he, he's got our two favorites right there in the same group. And Prowler and Gold Striker are two very different coasters, but at the end of the day, they deliver a lot of the same elements. I think you got a lot of airtime, directional changes. Uh, good sensation of speed. Um, <clears throat> you know, Gold Striker has a lot of tunnels and side tunnels and partial tunnels that were added after the fact um, because of the whole noise reduction issue. Um, the one thing that Prowler doesn't have that I like about Gold Striker that I talked to is the station flyby. Mm-hmm. It's something that Prowler doesn't really have. And <clears throat> the one on Gold Striker, you have that enclosed first drop where the tunnel's over it to try kind of mitigate the sound, and yeah. it wraps around the observation tower. And then it cuts back toward the station and does a high bank left turn. And you cut right in between a little sliver between the lift hill and the station, and you go over a really small airtime speed hill. And connecting the lift hill to the station are wooden cross beams. So as you're getting this airtime coming out of your seat, there's head choppers with all these cross beams <laughs> on the station fly through. And, you're in, and you have a big wooden structure, the lift hill on one side, and the station wall on the other. So it's it's like you're, you're really just kind of really tight in there and really enclosed. And that's, that's kind of a, it's a good uh, predecessor to what that entire ride is. Last one, David H. here. He said his favorite is Lightning Racer. His least favorite is Guazi, and for some reasons we talked about before. And he said, ironic how they're both dueling coasters. So, 
That's, yeah. And that's an interesting way to kind of finish this off. You know, GCI has been great with intermingling two coasters that don't necessarily have the same layout. I mean, a lot of your racers you see have very similar or side-by-side or mirrored layouts. GCI, I think, is really one of the only companies that has gone outside of the box where you have two coasters coexisting in the same space that have completely different layouts. B&M did it with Dueling Dragons, where those are two completely different coasters, but they coexist together and they interact with each other. Um, you know, Guazi, you had one that was completely dueling, and then Lightning Racer was racing and dueling, which was the first coaster in the U.S. to be both racing and dueling. Um, you know, where sometimes you're side by side, then other mm-hmm. times you're going at each other and the flybys, and it's really just cool the way that they're able to get those two trains to finish within just inches of each other mm-hmm. pretty much every time. Yeah. Uh, that's really a neat act of that one. And then Joris and the Drock is the same way over there at uh, Efteling, where they they start off side by side, and sometimes you're side by side, other times you're going at each other. And then uh, you kind of line up at the end and uh, go towards the finish line. So um, it's, it's really interesting how they've done that. And I think GCI might be – they might be some of the most picturesque wooden coasters, just the way they twist and turn and just the curves. I mean, look at – if you look at an uh, aerial picture of, like, a Gold Striker or a Thunderhead or Gwazi or Lightning Racer, you just look at the way that they curve and – it's, it, there's so much continuity in the structure, and it's really just a wonderful thing to look at. <laughs> well, as always, uh, thank you for joining us here. Thank you for writing in that we had a really great response to a lot of people. We tried to get through as many as we could. Um, you know, uh, you know, as always, just keep sending in that stuff. There's multiple. We, we try and put these questions out to multiple different areas to try to reach you. So we're not, don't, we're not asking you to come to the mountain. It's more of, you know, we'll bring the mountain to you. So if you see it, um, you know, try to respond as much as you can. Um, you know, and, and as always, thank you for, for watching the show. Uh, hopefully you're enjoying it. And um, well, I guess I'm Andy Barczyk from Chicago, Illinois. And I'm Danny Miller from Rochester, New York. And as always, right on right warriors. See you next time.